Hey guys, so I was going to address the question, can you 3D print a wind turbine? Short answer, yes, but it um, normally doesn't look like this. Um, I had a bit of an accident yesterday, um, I decided I thought I'd do a video. It was lovely and sunny yesterday as opposed to the rain we've got outside today, so apologies if you can hear any raindrops there. Um, so yesterday I went about building a stand, I had a spare bit of drain pipe which fits on the bottom of this cu uh, coupler here. Um, built that up, I then had it nearly fall over once, should have been a sign but I didn't heed that sign um, and then it probably fell over and this is the result. So I thought, well I was a bit dismayed and a bit disheartened but then I thought I'll do it anyway and I'll do the video um, and then I still plan to, to fix it and if people are interested I could do another video about it in the future. So this design's off Thingiverse and it's a fantastic design. It's his second version now. Um, and this one uses a more powerful motor, um, uses a 50 watt motor. Um, the previous one was able to produce about 50, uh, five watts. Um, when I say motor, it's a stepper motor. Um, it's 24 volt uh, running through a bridge rectifier. Um, and that potentially at full speed should be able to generate um, around 50 watts um, now the killer question is does it generate 50 watts and yes and no and um, the thing i found is i'll show some footage of it running um, which hopefully i should be able to put next to me um, and it gets a really good speed and it's going but those conditions are very rare um, i live in a built-up area as you can see in that video um, and it's um, the air is pretty turbulent. From what I understand is you've got to have it 20 meters or above. Um, I live in a fairly built up area. Unfortunately, I'd love a piece of land and just put this on a 20 meter pole um, just to see what it can do, you know, see if it generates some real electricity. Um, and yeah, that didn't kind of work out. Um, so my children love wind turbines. Um, there is some bigger industrial type wind turbines not too far from here. Um, but they're not visible for the house, which is great for me, <laughs> from my perspective. I don't mind them, but you don't want to see them every day. Um, but for my children, they can't see them. So this is why I did the first project and then upgraded the second one, just for the kids to see it in the garden. They're four now, and they love to see it spinning around. Um, so I thought I'd just still do the video and just to go through a couple of points. Um, the 50 watt and what I mentioned before, the power generation. Um, one of the issues I've had is trying to capture that power. Um, I've looked for specific um, wind charge controllers, but the main focus on those seems to be for much, much bigger turbines. Um, and then they have a, a dump load associated because that's a one bad side effect compared to solar is that when this is spinning, it's generating power. Um, and if your battery gets fully charged, you need to do something with that power. So that's what the dump load there is. Um, can be a, um, a hot water system, it can be, um, it could just be a big light array, it could be anything just to dump that power somewhere so it's not gonna damage your battery. Um, so anyway, because of that, they're focused on bigger turbines. I couldn't find anything small. Um, I did try my small Landstar um, from EP Ever, and that worked to a fashion, but I wasn't actually seeing any real power draw. Um, one thing is, it's in fits and bursts, so it'll get up to speed um, and then that power will start generating when it gets up to a decent RPM. Um, but then you'll not see too much power coming through. Now, I'm wondering if I need to get that running through a DC a DC converter. So, because it spends large periods at lower voltage rather than at that absolute peak voltage um, when it's going at full tilt. So, if anyone's used anything similar in the past and has got any experience, that'd be fantastic if you want to stick a comment down below. Um, but yeah, so I just thought I'd show it, and it is a good design. Um, some things that I've learned through my experience is the um, a lot of the nuts and bolts I purchased um, cheaply off AliExpress and other places um, have turned out not to be stainless steel. Um, all galvanized or anything to make it have any um, protection. So these bolts here have rusted pretty bad, but the bolts that are on the blades haven't um, so they fared much better um, the other issue is um, when I built this as well um, 
The second revision was to try and keep costs down. One of the things to keep the cost down was a large bearing on the bottom. Um, that's flange, so it's got a lip on it. So the designer made it so that he had a designed out of PLA or whatever plastic we were going to print in. He designed out of plastic a bearing system. Um, on the face of it, fantastic. In reality, that was so awkward to build and just so finicky. And I think just about everyone that's built this is just elected to not bother with that and has used the old design um, from the previous revision and that still works. The only thing I did have to do was to make a spacer. Um, and if I remember correctly, that was a three mil thick spacer. Um, it's a very simple spacer um, and that just makes it so that it doesn't wobble because there's this little bit of play there, but previously I was getting a hell of a lot of wobble. Um, other things that I've had an issue with are, again, the rusting, like I've mentioned, on the 8mm rod on the back. Um, that's rusted fairly bad. That is an old rod, and I do have another section, but again, it shouldn't be rusting like that if it's stainless steel. Um, the One other issue is between here and this two sections, um, of the nacelle and where the stepper motor is, he has um, put in an O-ring which is just stretched around. Initially that works great, um, but then this is the second one I've been through and I'm not sure if it's the heat that we're experiencing in the UK um, over the summer recently, um, which is kind of unprecedented, or it's just maybe stretched a bit too far, but these keep snapping. Um, it's not the end of the world, but the only bummer is obviously then that leaves it more open and for water to ingress into there. Um, what might have been a better design, the way he's done this, is that it's held only by the bar at the bottom, which comes through and it nips these two sections together. What might have been better is another section on the, the top, just build up here and build up here, and another bolt, and that would nip that top section together, so it'd be clamped top and bottom. So that would probably be a bit better. Um, I'm just going to quickly on camera, if this takes too long I'll speed it up, I'm going to just take the nose cone off and one of the main features of this design is that it has a variable pitch on the blades um, so in essence an auto braking system which is what is meant to stop it destroying itself in high winds so what happens is that the default pitch the blades will be turned around but then when it goes too fast there's, it's spring loaded in the nose cone here um, and it'll cause those blades to pitch around and then there's no resistance for it to push against or very little and the idea is then it slows down. Um, I think it didn't help the fact of where it is um, and like I mentioned before the issues of being 20 meter down so it's pretty turbulent. Um, So this is the last bolt here, and may not be able to make it out, but it's pretty annoying. The bottom of the bolt is perfectly black still. Um, these were black bolts originally, um, and then the top of it's just got that surface rust on, which is frustrating. There you go. So that's the spring I mentioned. Um, what I'll do is I'll bring the camera closer so you get to see there. So hopefully you're a bit in a, a bit in a bit closer there. And like I mentioned prior, you can see the, uh, hopefully it's focusing on that, that bolt head. Um, this is the front of the nose cone. Um, the bolt that comes through here, that's just a cap that goes on, which has a reverse thread. And the only problem with this is trying to get a grip on it. So I was able to get it that close, but then a small gap here. Didn't have that problem with the previous design, but um, it's just maybe the printed tolerances. Is, oh, deciding to come off so yeah it's just there ball goes through but I wasn't able to screw that in any further than what I had it and it's gonna yeah so I'm still gonna always end up with that gap um, ball comes through and you can vary the strength at which it is required to twist by how deep the spring is allowed to go and I've just got two nuts on there and then that means there and it it needs more compression to press it down. Um, you'll notice that the blades are, well this one is, is, is cracked, but they have a two-part design. Um, when these are fully tightened, it's designed so that it should pull the 
two parts together and they will be perfectly smooth. Um, when he first designed this, this was the only version he had. But after a few people mentioned in the forums that they have printers tall enough, and I do have a CR10 which will be able to print this, he's released the file so this could be printed in one section. Um, it's not going to be any stronger because that would snap just as easy in the instance that incident that I had. Um, but what it would mean is that it's um, just aerodynamically a bit smoother and everything. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a CR10 and try and reprint three blades um, all in one go. Um, so basically what's happened here is that if I can get in here and show, these guys rotate, um, like I mentioned, but they shouldn't freely rotate like that. Um, there's a hinge mechanism here, so when this comes out, and then you can see the blades rotating. So the idea is that when it goes at high speed, um, it extends out, compresses that spring, which is what's doing the resistance, and then that goes straight. And so then that stops it spinning. Um, that works pretty well, but the thing I have found is that you need to maybe super glue these onto the mounts inside. There should be some kind of um, particular nut head to use and then a captive hole or something to go in. But at the moment, it's just kind of flush, so that needs to be super glued in there. Um, but what I would say is that it's a fantastic design. Um, works really well um, it, in general practice, but it's obviously not something to be dropped because it doesn't matter if it was commercial or not. So I'm kind of like in two minds about this project. Can you print a 3D print turbine? Which you know, I kind of addressed at the start, but yes, you can. Um, I didn't get any usable electricity out of it. Um, and obviously I destroyed this when I went to do a video yesterday, which is, uh, yeah, that, that was my own doing, my own fault. So, But I thought I'd put a video out anyway, um, just so people could see the project. Um, like I say, I showed the video and I'll put it at the end of the video as well, just showing that it does work and does spin. Um, so if you want something just from an aesthetic point of view, like I said, my children love wind turbines, so they thought it was fantastic. Um, this is also pretty quiet. I did worry about my neighbors and having something like that at the bottom of the garden, but it, yeah, didn't make too much noise, just a light little whoosh, which is um, not too bad. And to be honest, in the kind of winds that you get when it's going full tilt, you're not gonna be outside anyway. So there's no great conclusion from this video and no, um, fantastic outcome but I thought I'd make the video anyway put it out there um, hope it's like it and if you people do enjoy it I can maybe do a follow-up video once I've repaired the blades I can look at doing that DC to DC converter and we can see if we can get some decent power from this the idea was that in the winter I may be able to get some decent power when it's not nice weather um, and just sort of 50 watts 25 watts I'd take just to trickle through just to keep the pack semi topped up um, or just save it from dying basically the pack in the winter. Um, shouldn't be too much more of an issue because I've moved it from the playhouse to the garage, but we'll see. So I hope this has been some interest um, watching my destroyed turbine, but uh, please feel free to like, um, subscribe, and uh, thanks for watching.